Hello everyone! Today we're going to talk about cutting the blouse in a bias. Here I have a pink silk. I don't want to cut the fabric along the lengthwise grain, so that it shows all the curves of my body. I want to cut it on a bias. You may remember how slim I looked in the dress cut on a bias. Here I have a sketch of a blouse. The tucks will be slant and pretty long. I'll make such a nice small blouse cut in a bias. I'll have a v-neck, and I want to add a ruffle here. It will just hang down loose. The length of the blouse at the front is 65 cm, and the opening of the neckline 15 cm. Remember that we'll cut the fabric on a bias, so it will sag a bit. Remember that we also don't open the armholes more when we cut in a bias. Now let's have a look at the pattern. First, I want to decide on the depth of the neckline. Put the beginning of the measuring tape here and measure as much as you need. I want 15 cm. Remember that I cut on a bias, so it will sag a bit. The summer is on, so I want the open close. I'll open the neckline and the shoulders a bit. Now I'll show you how to work with the bias cut. I've already showed you the dress, and now we'll make a blouse. I don't want it to be too tight. It should be a bit loose. I'll show you how to change the tuck, so that one part moves to the fitting ease, and the other to the bias tuck. I'll also show you how to make a blouse a bit flare. The bias cut tends to sag, so even if we make the blouse a bit flare, it won't be too wide. Let's design the blouse. It's very hard to see you without a good basic pattern. Mine is made on the basis of my 10 measurement system. I don't have any problems with the fit or with the adjustment of the pattern. I just choose a design and make an item. It's very important to know how to work with the bias cut. When you cut on a bias, the center front and center back should be at the angle of 45 degrees towards the lengthwise grain. If the angle is less or more than 45 degrees, the items don't fit you well. A bias cut suits every woman. If you want to buy such a dress or a blouse in a shop, be ready to pay a lot for it. Such design is too complicated for the regular shops. If you want something special, do it yourself. This is my pattern, the back and the front. I remind you that you don't need to open the armholes more. A bias cut doesn't require it. I'll cut the front and the back and then transfer the tuck. Learn how to make the tucks. When cutting on a bias, you need to know a lot of peculiarities about the tucks. There should always be a back seam in such blouses. The back would sag without it. I've already showed you how to make a dress cut on a bias, so you already know some details. If you haven't watched the video, do it. We won't show you the whole process now, just the cutting and the fitting. The tuck will end a bit lower the waistline, for about 4 cm. This is the tuck. I've told you a lot of times that when taking such a bias tuck, you can fold it just like that and cut about 3 or 4 mm off here, making a slightly curved line, just like that. It's not absolutely straight anymore. Close this tuck, because we moved it here. When we attach these two parts, this side will be longer. Don't try to gather it, just cut the extra piece. This small part. Such tucks fit much better on a bias cut. But you can use them not only for a bias cut. I close the shoulder, so this part is too high now. Cut it a bit. It often happens when we close the chest tuck. I open the neckline for about 2.5 cm.
I want the shoulder to be 9 cm wide, so I take 2 more centimeters off here. The width of the shoulder is 9 cm. Now we need to measure the length. I show you once again. Take measuring tape and put a mark 65 cm on the shoulder. We don't really need to add anything, but it still add 2 or 3 cm just in case I'll need to fix something. I make a 15 cm opening for the neckline. The line should be absolutely straight. I forgot I decided to add the ruffle, so I need to change the line a bit. I don't want to open the neckline too much. I've cut the neckline. Now I need to open the shoulder. I cut only the upper part. Don't cut anything off here. Cut this way. I have a straight line here, it will look really good. We should also make an opening here on the front. Just a small one. About 1.5 cm. A very small one. I need it for the fitting ease. Firstly, I need it for the fitting ease. I'll also add a couple of centimeters more here for it. Secondly, to make the tuck a bit smaller, so that it's easier for me to stitch the top of it. The tuck is very big. This is the back. I also take 2.5 cm off here. Open it as much as you want. I like it this way. I'll make an opening here too, to make this tuck smaller. I don't need this tuck, so I'll just ignore it. It's very important to explain people how to adjust the fit. You may have a very good basic pattern, but you may not know how to adjust it to a particular design. I remind you that I move the shoulder tuck lower for the blouse to be a bit loose. I'll make the hips wider too, this way. I won't flare this part anymore. Now have a look here. We cut 2 cm off here and 2.5 and off here. This is the neckline. Now we need to make the shoulders even. Always check them this way and you won't have any problems. You can see that the shoulders are even now. This point is on the same distance away from the center front and this one from the center back. Now I'll show you how to make a ruffle. I outline the shoulder, the neckline, and the center front. I want a ruffle to be not less than 20 cm long on the center. I'll take 21 cm. Now measure about 15 cm from the beginning of a shoulder. Have a look here. Now connect these two points, 15 cm and 21 cm, with a nice round line. Let me take the pencil. I'll cut it out and show you. I know that I'm not a good artist, but I'm a good tailor. That fact always makes me happy. I'll show you how to make a ruffle. 
the more flare it is, the better. It's popular now to have the hanging down details on the items. This is the center front. This is the neckline and this is the shoulder. The shoulder ends here, but the ruffle is wider, so that it looks beautiful hanging down. You can make it as wide as you want. Now I'll flare the ruffle. The front and the back of the blouse are ready. Now let's make the ruffle. When you flare it, you don't have to make all the cuts even. We'll flare it this way. I'll make the cuts now, but I'll flare them on the fabric. Take the corner of the fabric. To find the needed angle, fold the fabric, put in the lengthwise and the crosswise grains together. Then put the fabric on a table, placing the fold towards yourself along the edge. Don't stretch the fabric. It should lay naturally. You don't need to stretch anything. You should be very careful. I need to put a couple of pins here. This is the center front. I move it a bit to add a couple of centimeters to the fitting ease. I want a blouse to be pretty loose. I don't pin it straight. I will also add about 3 cm here. I need to draw this tuck now. I'll do it now. I draw one side with the chalk. Now I need to pin it. I'll do the same thing with the other side too. Remember that it's very important to transfer all the tucks accurately. It's very easy to make a mistake. The bias cut is not stable, so we need to be very careful. Now I draw the second side with the chalk too. I make the very small lines. The fabric is 1.4 meters long and 1.4 meters wide. I really hope that I'll manage to cut the front from one corner and the back from the other. And from the left piece, I'll make a ruffle. Be very careful. You can see that I put a lot of pins here, so that I can easily draw a tuck on the other side. I just need to draw the bottom and the side seam and I can start cutting. You can cut silk, viscose and even polyester in a bias. Polyester creep is very popular now. Chiffon is commonly used for the bias cut. We've already showed you how to make a dress cut in a bias. The ruler is 3 cm wide, so that's how I add 3 cm here. I 
I also add 3 cm here, because I want the blouse to be wide. I don't need any free space on the armhole, so I add just 1 cm here, and then draw a bias line, making it wider. I make this line longer, and in the middle of the tuck, I turn to this line. I do it in order to in order to have enough fabric to get in the side C when we stitch the tuck. I start cutting. The front is almost ready. The seam should be 7 mm wide. This one, 1 cm. And this, 7 mm again. Have a look here. This is the front. This is the bias thread, which is at the angle of 45 degrees. I open the tuck a bit, added some to the edges for a blouse to be a bit wider. I cut the tuck in such a way that it's not straight, but a bit curved. We can make it more round if we need. The neckline is pretty good. Now let's put the front aside and start cutting the back. Take the opposite corner of the fabric and fold it the same way. Put in the 45 degree fold towards yourself. I left some space here to make the blouse wider. I don't want it to be tight. It's better be a bit loose. I'll add 3.5 cm here and one here. I want the bottom to be wider. It's very hard to make the items cut on the bias, but I've already showed you the dress. I think that many of you will manage to make it. I make it 3 cm longer. I mark the waistline. Even though the blouse is not slim waisted, I make this line a bit curved, just a bit. Here I also mark 1 cm and 3 cm and draw a line. Let's start cutting. 7 mm wide seam here. One centimeter here, seven millimeters here, I also make this line a bit curved, just for a couple of millimeters. My body is pretty straight, so I don't need the lines to be curved. Even though the blouse is wide, the line should be just a bit curved. The seam on the back is obligatory. Sometimes we can do without it, but not in this case. The items cut on the bias sag on the back. You need a seam to avoid it. We've cut out the back and the front. I've told you everything about the bias cut. How careful and attentive you should be. That's all for today. Be different every day. Learn from us and practice. In the next video, 
I'll design the ruffle and show you the fitting of the blouse. If you like the video, subscribe to my channel. Next time I'll show you the finished blouse. My name is Paukštė Irina. Goodbye.